Today, we're gonna actually take you on a little bit of a tour, cage by cage update of the zoo. It's been a while since I've showed you everything. I wanna give you an update of how things are going. First off, look at Ariana. He has a giant lump in there right now. This is when things start to really start to pop here. We've got Ivy in the background. Two months since she's had her baby. Eating really well, she's rebounding. Started to put that size on, and now she's getting back to the girl she was. Anacondas are amazing, but now that Ariana's eating big meals like this, in about a year, year and a half, she's gonna be close to Ivy size. You know something that really is starting to grow too that I think is amazing? The albino eastern box turtle. Again, there's only a few of these in the entire world, and when we got him, he was literally the size of a nickel. Now look at how big he's getting. Now, obviously, he's got a long way to go, because these guys will get about four or five inches long, probably tripled or quadrupled his size, and now when you hold him, he actually has some weight to him. This animal is so cool, so much personality. I absolutely love him to death, and I cannot wait till he's big enough to where we can take him out and let people play with him, because box turtles have incredible personalities. Of course, Helen is doing great. She's got a little bit of shit on her so she's getting a little soak and we're just trying to get that shed off it happens sometimes especially as it's starting to get cool at night and the heat starts going on it starts to dry out a little bit but look at that just coming off really beautiful helen is a fan favorite for sure she's such a beautiful animal we'll put her in the soak for a little longer and that shed will come off even quicker cherry pop is amazing of course it's a red aki monitor getting too close to the adult size now nice and plump and chunky inquisitive animal loving them again it's really cool to see all the animals really flourishing here and doing really well things start to slow down here at the rep tear them a little bit when it comes to tours and events whereas during the summer months we were booked every single day now we have a little bit more time to work with the animals ourselves which is amazing we're really going to beef up during the fall months and then we can spend some time on training as well and we'll be able to spend some little bit of extra time when it comes to training speaking of training obviously kush is an animal that we're going to have to work with more here too still just a little bit defensive but literally not terrible come on kush it's okay and there Kush goes. Where are you going, bud? We'll let him kind of cruise around here for a minute, just get a little bit out of the cage. It's an amazing animal. And again, it's one of those things that I have to put more and more time into because this is an animal that definitely you don't want to get bitten by. But look at how awesome that is. That is a prehistoric, amazing animal. Then on the other complete end of the spectrum, when it comes to docility, is this animal here, which of course is Flaming Hot Cheetah or a Bearded Dragon. We have two Bearded Dragons, but Flaming Hot's been with us the longest. And this thing is just a puppy dog. I mean, you could put this on any kid and it will sit there for hours. It's just an amazing animal. I love the color of this guy. I couldn't imagine life without him. Of course, we got Drogo here. Let's see what Drogo is doing. Hi, good morning, Drogo. The two-toed sloth. He's gonna be five years old pretty soon. Do you want a little apple, buddy? There you go, bud. <laughs> when we do the expansion, of course, we're going to try to add a couple more mammals. Still deciding exactly what it is. Right now, we, of course, have Drogo and we have Brillo the armadillo. But this is just such a cool animal. Now that we've had him for a couple years, it's really amazing to get to know what sloths are really like. Of course, you guys know salt and pepper. It's crazy to think that salt is almost three years old now. As a matter of fact, she's going to be three just in a couple weeks. Gosh, she is getting big and heavy. And of course, pepper is over three because it's about six weeks older than salt. But they have gotten really big and they are amazing. I love my alligators so much. Sunfire is a beautiful reticulum. Whoa, look at that snake. What are you doing? Whoa, hold down. It's got a giant meal in her from a couple days ago. You can see how big that animal is right there. And still, when you open the enclosure, it's just like food I want to eat. Beautiful animal. As this gets older, it's going to get more and more beautiful. In fact, Manoa ended up having to stay in here for the night when she was eating the other day. If you haven't seen that video, I'll put a card right here. It's definitely worth watching. Tiana, the Lewis Eye Hybrid. Of course, one of our cyclera that we have here. Absolutely incredible animals. The thing that's amazing about Cyclera, which of course are the rhinos, the Lewis Eye, they're just such good animals and she's doing really well. Every year she actually lays slug eggs because we don't have a male in with her. And once she's an adult like this, it's hard to actually introduce a male because oftentimes they'll fight. And we really don't want to necessarily produce any more anyways, but she did lay a clutch of eggs here a little bit earlier this year that were infertile. She passed them all, which is really good. And she's doing really well, nice and plump and absolutely a wonderful animal. Then of course we have this little crazy man here, Rillo the Armadillo. Come on, buddy. Come on now. He is such an amazing animal. Everyone that comes into the Reptera, no, you can't play with that lock. He always tries to eat the lock. Come on over here, bud. Everyone that comes over here and spends some time with this guy absolutely falls in love with him. He's become one of the most favorite animals here at the Reptera. It's just because he has so much personality. He loves pets. He loves people. He loves to play. He's more like a dog than he is anything else. And I just can't imagine not having an armadillo now, especially a six-banded like my guy Brillo here. Love scratches. Watch this. He's scratch, scratch, scratch. Oh, he's loving it. Oh, 
these little hairs on his back are basically a cat's whiskers, right? He can feel everything like this all the way through that. Hey, what are you doing, Brillo? Don't you do it. No, no, no. He loves me a little bit too much sometimes. Brillo, I love you. I do, but you can't do that to me, okay? All right, buddy. I love you, bud. Al Machino, the Machino reticulated python, is just coming out of shed right now. So it's kind of in that clear stage just before it sheds. As soon as it sheds here in the next probably 24 to 48 hours, going to look absolutely beautiful. One male reticulated python that I really can trust here because male reticulated pythons can be a little bit touchy. You never know. They can get into breeding mode and then they really get defensive because they're actually thinking about females rather than thinking about handling. Al is one of those animals that you can trust 100% unless you have food that he gets a little bit crazy. And another animal that's just coming out of shed, you can see she's still got a little bit of blue to her eyes. Of course, is my girl Perdita here. I mean, what an absolute spectacular snake. There's no doubt that she is the animal everyone wants to come in and handle because she's so beautiful, so docile, and just such an amazing snake. It's crazy to think that I got her almost three years ago and she was solid white with one little dot of black on her. Now look at how crazy the color pattern is on it. What an absolute ripper. Take a look at this, guys. Come in here. Of course, my black-headed python, Snap and Pop. Of course, this is Snap down here. Pop is up top right there. It's cool to see them up on the rock crevices like this. I always talk about people think that oftentimes blackheads spend all their time on the ground, but this is proof that that's just not the fact that they are always up on the rocks. And when I designed this enclosure, I specifically designed it for black-headed pythons. And these guys will stay in here forever. Take a look at this, guys. It's really cool. I love this. This is when a snake is drinking. Of course, Jeffrey, the hypogranite Burmese python, having a little drink right now. And I always just think it's amazing. They use themselves almost like as a straw, right? Obviously, they don't have arms, so they get in there and they just kind of suck their water up. And it's kind of cool. You don't catch it too often. The fact that we're having to see it right now is pretty cool. Jeffrey just had a pretty big meal in him this week, so still got a big lump in him. This snake is getting bigger by the day. Interesting Tabasco. Very cage defensive. But as soon as you start to pet him, you see how he leaned into that pet? He's like, pet me. He closes his eyes. Of course, he's a red phase green iguana, or guana iguana as they would call him. But he is absolutely incredible. Look at the dewlap on this guy right here. Very, very cage defensive. But as soon as he knows there's going to be pets, he turns into a puppy dog. Look at Cupcake right here. Of course, she's just a BCI, or what they would call a boa constrictor imperator, a common boa. That is one big snake right there. She's about 10 foot long. A 10 foot long python, like a reticulated python or a bird Burmese python weigh about half of her size. That's just a beefy animal. I mean, it's just built like a brick. I've seen a lot of big boas in my days, but Cupcake may be one of the biggest boas that I have personally ever seen. Absolutely wonderful animal. Then, of course, we have French's here, the albino iguana. She's absolutely amazing. And we got Heinz up top here, which is the hypo, which is what they call a sun glow iguana. So it's hypo and albino. A little bit more color to that animal. Then we have a red foot tortoise down at the bottom. They only get about this size. They don't get much bigger than this. And it's just a cool animal. Again, when we're taking out animals for education. Kids love these guys because, again, Matilda's absolutely amazing, but she's so big, it's hard to actually take her out. This is a great Emma. Look at the collar in these guys. You can sometimes get what they call cherry heads, where their heads are really red, too, but I still love these guys. I mean, they're one of my favorite tortoises, for sure. Yo, we made this pond down at Universal Rock. I really wasn't exactly sure what the vision was, but now it's really cool to have a dozen albino reared sliders, and then we have about a dozen actual normal red-eared sliders, and then there's actually some musk turtles down at the bottom. It's really become an exhibit that people love. I mean, kids come over here are marveling at them and it's a really cool thing and the albino red-haired sliders are a little bit more docile than the normal red-haired sliders. It's just cool to see them and I just think it's an exhibit that works really well. Another cyclura. Oh, look who's coming. Diddy and Dixie. How are you? As soon as Diddy comes out, Dixie's like, what's going on? I'm coming out too. You can come out, little girl. You're all right. These are my puppy dogs here, of course. Some more iguanas, but these are rhino iguanas. You guys know I love Bella. She was my first rhino iguana and I always think she's one of the most special iguanas I ever had. But Diddy and Dixie, they're so something about them. They always want to come out. They always want to get pets. Remember last year, Dixie actually laid a clutch of eggs, and we thought for sure she was grabbing again this year, but she never laid any eggs. We didn't ultrasound or anything like that, and she just never did. So hey, maybe next year we'll get some eggs for her. Completely fine either way. I just love these guys to death. Okay, so it's time to get Kush back in. Such a beautiful animal. Definitely, I wish that I could get this thing as tame as Elvis. I'm going to work on it a lot here over the next couple months. It's doing really well, super healthy, but definitely still a little bit crazy. Not a biter, which is really good, but it will rip you up. I mean, there's no doubt any time that you handle a croc monitor, you are going to bleed. These guys are super cool here. These are actually pink belly side neck turtles, but albinos. And they're getting some size to them right now. We actually have just a pair of these guys. They are so cool. Of course, they call them side necks because they turn their neck to the side like that. And they have a pretty long neck compared to most of the terrapins out there. Just really cool animals. They get relatively big. So pretty soon when we do the expansion, these guys will get a big enclosure and they'll get really nice. And they're just really, I love them. Look at how beautiful that belly is. Then of course, we have this chunky monkey here. This is Al, of course, the marine toad. This particular one comes from C. 
Sierra Dam. The Sierra Dam ones get bigger for some reason than most of the other localities. That is one big toad. We got this little guy when it was literally like the size of a penny just about a month and a half ago. It's an apricot albino. I love these little Pac-Man frogs. And these guys will get giant. So this is just a little monkey right here. It's gonna get really cool. Look at the pattern and coloring on this thing. And I cannot believe this is an animal that has literally probably tripled its size in the last month and a half. And of course we have these guys here. These are our little baby frillies from this year. They are so cool. When you get baby frillies captive hatch and you handle them like we do, like tons and tons of habituation, they become so socialized and so amazing because really frillies typically don't like to be handled that much. But when they get used to it, they become amazing. And they're just like their dad, Nova. Definitely not like their mom. She doesn't like people very much. And of course, this is another new animal that we just got. This is actually an African millipede or a giant millipede. As a matter of fact, you didn't see the video when we got this one. I'm gonna put a card up here so you guys can actually watch that one too. It's really cool. I love these guys. They're so unique and so interesting. And this one, their defense mechanisms to curl up, tighten the ball. Their other defense mechanisms to excrete a little bit of a, a liquid that can actually be an irritant. And is it actually doing to me right now? Yes, it is. You don't want to get that in your eyes because it definitely will be a problem. And uh, I think there's a little poop in there too. Ben and Jerry, the two-headed snake. What a freaking awesome animal is that? So happy that we have a two-headed snake that has thrived for so long. And of course, we redid the enclosure because remember there used to be a ledge right here and he would get in there and actually rip the center right here. Now we have to redo the cage so that there's no places where they can fight. And now there's no injury in between them, which is really good. Doing absolutely amazing feeding, growing beautiful snake, and we are so lucky to have it. Honey is our other ball python that we have here, which is just a piebald ball python. Helen is an amazing animal. People love her to death, but then sometimes you want to move up to something a little bit different, something really beautiful like a piebald ball python. And it's again, growing like a weed, getting really big. It's about maybe half grown now, so it's just going to only get bigger and bigger, but loves being handled. Another snake that's really cool to handle is actually half of the hog nose snake right here. They got that really cool pug nose and kids just love these guys. For whatever reason, whenever we bring out Peppa, it's one of the more popular animals. We it's not big. It doesn't hold on like a normal snake. It's not a constrictor. So it's an interesting type of snake, but again, doing really well. And because it's a male, it's not going to get much bigger. Of course, there's mango and papaya in here and they're a little bit sketchy. You know, I mean, they don't really like to be handled. So we're continuing trying to work on them, but as they get bigger, hopefully they're going to mellow out. They have a really wicked bite. You don't want anyone to get bit by, but they are super cool. And I love this enclosure. And of course we have the dad and mama, the baby frillies, like I mentioned. Nova here, look at him. He's just looking at me like, what's going on? For whatever reason, he used to always hang out down here so we could play with him all the time. Now that's his favorite spot is to hang up here. And I think it's because he can keep a look on his girlfriend, Lilith, that always stays up there. That's her spot. She likes to be up there 90% of the time. And now he's hanging out over here. We still take him out a ton. I mean, he's a super cool animal, but today he's just looking like, dad, leave me alone. Let's not give him a little break. We have two Doomerals boas here. This is the bigger one. This is actually Breadlow, which is, of course, is a male Doomerals boa from Madagascar. Unbelievably beautiful patterning on these guys. And really placid, just really cool snakes to hold. Just like Cupcake, the boa constrictor, very strong, very stout animals, really built like heavy duty. And it used to really like to squeeze on people when you took it out, but it's actually gotten pretty good about handling. So again, it's an animal that comes out all the time. Oh, Night Fury. Look at this snake right here. Oh my gosh. He's getting some size to him now too. He's starting to put on more and more size. Of course, this is a motley golden child reticulated python. That iridescence. That's just an absolute unbelievable ripper. I mean, look at that snake. As it's getting bigger, it's just getting better and better and more iridescent. I mean, wow. This snake is amazing. And basically the absolute opposite of Night Fury is this guy here, which is Marshmallow. Marshmallow actually ate its first rabbit this week. So you can still see it has a pretty good lump. He's going to start gaining some size now that he's getting big meals like that. Unbelievably placid. Burmese pythons are just amazing. We all know that. But wow, I tell you what, this is a ripper here. And I love him. Although he's not pure white, he's more like an off-white toasted marshmallow, if you know what I mean, but he's still super cool. Terrence the Tegu. Come here, buddy. Black and white Argentine Tegu. We actually have an albino as well that is off exhibit that we use for education that is unbelievable as well. This is a boy. Our albino is actually a girl. We're not going to ever breed them or anything like that, but Tegus are just amazing. Largest lizard down in South America. They're kind of the modeler lizard of South America. This is the closest thing that you can get right here. Got those big jaws starting to come in as a male. It's only going to get bigger as it 
gets bigger, but just amazing. When you get a tame tegu, there's not a lizard that's much cooler than that. Gene the Walma Python, an absolutely gorgeous snake from Australia. Of course, these are very closely related to the blackheaded. These are Aspidites ramsii, whereas the blackheads are Aspidites melanolucus. Very similar animals. The only real difference is a little bit different color. And of course, these guys don't have the blackhead. But the Walmas, for whatever reason, at least in my experience, seem to be much more placid. If I was holding a blackhead like this, they're so food-oriented, they'd probably grab my hand right now. Walmas, at least in my experience, are very docile. Vietnamese mossy frogs. This enclosure is really cool in the sense that there's a handful of them in here, but only every now and then you see one like right up there. The rest of them blend into all the moss and all of the foliage in here. It doesn't make for the greatest display when you're like, I can't see a frog, but it's kind of cool because they have a really cool environment that they're happy in. I love the whole feel of it. And Vietnamese mossy frogs are awesome. Take a look at Carl, the emerald tree boa. Yeah, and I always talk about how emerald tree boas are one of those animals that really got me into reptiles. Way when I was young, seeing pictures of these guys, thinking that one day I hope that I would actually own one. So it's really cool that we now work with them here. I mean, what an unbelievably stunning animal. I've talked about it before, how I really love this enclosure. I remember when I made this enclosure, just when we opened up at the Reptarium, believe it or not, it's been four years, guys. Four days ago was our four year anniversary at the Reptarium. It's crazy to think what life was before I had the Reptarium. But when I made this enclosure, I hoped that Maisie, the corn snake, would spend a lot of time up in this little nook right here. And sure enough, that's where it spends all of its time. Maisie is a great animal, super nice. It's about eight, nine year old corn snake. So it's a pretty big corn snake. These guys can still live about 20, 23 years. So he's got a ways to go, but wow, what an absolutely placid snake. Of course, Reptar, the lychee gecko. What is this? The largest gecko in the world. And of course, I just love these guys to death. Whoa, he doesn't normally jump like that. Took me off guard, but wow, what an amazing animal. One day, I hope I can get to New Caledonia and actually see these guys in the wild. Then we have a handful of monitors here. Of course, we've got Beetlejuice way up at the top. Absolutely beautiful Bell's Face Lace Monitor from Australia. Gonna get about five, six foot long. So they get it pretty big. Not quite as big as a water monitor, but still pretty big. Speaking of water monitor, pick up right here, which is a T-negative albino water monitor. It's only about two years old now. So one day, because this is a male, get much larger. But because of locality, of this specific one, you're probably only talking about maybe four foot maximum, three and a half to four foot maximum, unlike the mainland like Elvis that can get six foot. And then lastly, it's that little monkey up there that stays up there all the time protecting himself. Of course, that's Chicken Strip, the albino Nile monitor, doing really, really well. I have to work with him a little bit more, still skittish and stuff like that, and I don't think he'll ever be a tame monitor. But you can get him out, at least he doesn't bite you because you don't want to get bit by a monitor that size. Neo, who doggy. That is one beautiful snake. It's got the Night Fury Motley Golden Child thing going on, but then it's got the white pie going on. Unbelievable. I love this animal. Of course, it's a female, and she's going to one day get pretty big, and I tell you what, she is going to be absolutely gorgeous when she gets big. Hey, she's gorgeous now, right? And she's a great animal to take out and handle. We've been handling her ever since she was a little tiny baby, so she's going to be like Perdita, used to being socialized so that she never gives us a problem. I tell you what, I love this animal to death. This is a cute little dude right here. This is actually the Baron's Racer. His name is Pinocchio. We got him from our friend Lindsay when he was just a little guy, not really big now. He's gonna eventually get six or eight foot long. There are green barons racer and then blue barons racers. I'll show you a blue one here in a little bit, but both of them are doing really well and they're just so absolutely adorable. My original green anaconda, Virde. Look at how deep and shit she is. She is blue as could be and still a puppy dog tame animal. That gives you an idea why anacondas are often thought as mean animals, but the truth is it couldn't be further from the truth. They are absolutely incredible. And listen, I hope that you guys are enjoying this video and we still have a lot to see, but let me know in the comments what you're enjoying most make sure you hit that like button as well as subscribe if you don't mind because I love showing off the collection and just giving you guys an update on everything that's happening here at the Reptarium. Snazzy here the normal Burmese python got a big meal this week too absolutely wonderful snake you know it's cool to see those mutations right you got the hypogranite Burmese python you've got the ivory Burmese python you got the normal Burmese python and of course sunrise the albino it gives us an opportunity to teach people how the color phases actually work how you layer recessive mutations or incomplete dominant mutations and it's just kind of cool to see the normal wild type as well so you can compare things but snaz is just an amazing animal speaking of an amazing animal of course joker the scaleless texas rat as a matter of fact we should probably do a drinking game every time i say amazing animal you guys do a shot you guys will be so drunk you don't even know i don't encourage drinking so don't do that i was just joking so of course joker the scaleless texas rat what an unbelievably cool animal i didn't say amazing i tell you some lizards i've absolutely fallen in love with they're so unusual and so cool and hopefully we can produce these things because it would be really cool we have a male and three females these are the Sudan plated lizards. I mean, look at how wild they are. They're such an unusual lizard. I mean, with that really crazy keeled scaling that pops up, real spiky and stuff like that, but yet super docile. Really cool animals, just look at that. I tell you what. 
one of the most underrated lizards I've ever seen. I always think one day that this pair is gonna actually breed. Of course, these are my solid island prehensile tail skinks. And look at that little monkey right there. He is not happy at all. He's like, leave me alone. Oh, you don't wanna get bit by that either. I tell you what, they have a wicked, wicked bite. That's the boy right there. The female is actually relatively docile. Not a really biter, to be honest with you. But they are a cool lizard from the Solomon Islands. And hopefully one day they will have a baby. They're live young. They typically only have one baby at a time. Look at this little monkey right here. Look at you. What are you doing, little guy? This is actually a white-throated monitor from South Africa, one of the three rock monitors from Africa. And these guys are all super, super docile animals. The white throats stay a little bit smaller. I love that dude. This is Mr. Nubbins, Dominican Red Mountain Boa. Just a very unusual snake, a live-bearing snake that's obviously from Dominica Republic and just really cool animal. It's about full-grown right here. They don't get much larger than this. And they're related to the rainbow boas, the Brazilian rainbow boas. Just a really cool animal. Happy to have it here at the Reptarium. And of course, the animal that's related to Mr. Nubbins would be Tiger Lily, which is the Brazilian rainbow boa. Absolutely incredible. Brazilian rainbow boas are stunning animals. The color, the iridescence, everything about them is really just amazing. They get about six foot long, not much thicker than this, a little bit more, but wow, I tell you what, what a cool snake. Then of course we have green tree monitors. We have a pair of green tree monitors that they call Varanus persinus. Just really cool animals. Not really handling animals, but so cool to look. I mean, that's a little green raptor just running around there. Just such cool animals. Look at the iridescence on that monkey right there. This of course is Bugatti, the Bolins python. I tell you what, that is one incredible snake. These guys get big. I mean, he's getting bigger, but he's got a long way to go. They'll get 10 foot and like this big around. So he's only about maybe 40% grown right now. It's only gonna get better as it gets bigger. Vlad the legless lizard, still not 100% warmed up to these guys. I think they're interesting and I think they're cool and not as freaked out about them as I used to be, but they're still a little bit freaky. I don't know what the difference is, right? Why is it that a legless lizard is more freaky than a snake? Cause it really just is kind of like a snake. I guess it's the way it moves and acts is so different than a snake and it rolls around like a little rotisserie chicken, just absolutely weird animal. I don't know what that defense mechanism of rolling actually does for it, but every single one of them always does it. And as promised, this is the blue Baron's racer. I showed you Pinocchio, which is the green Baron's racer. This is pretty much an adult female. They can get bigger. Males will get much, much bigger, but this is an adult female. Then you've got Wanda, which is of course a leaf tail gecko from Madagascar. This is what they would call a Europlady frimbriatus, and they've got those amazing eyes. And it's looking at me right now like, I can jump on you, can I? These things are absolutely incredible. Just such alien looking animals. Love them to death. All of my arachnids here, we've got Goody Sapphires, Rose Hair, Green Bottle Blue. We've got the Goliath Birding, the Brazilian Black. We've got a Curly Hair. Of course, we have a Rose Hair that I absolutely love that's super, super docile that we handle all the time. Now, we have a little African Emperor Scorpion in this wall. We definitely want to add an ant feature to either this wall or somewhere. Somewhere, I need to add ants into the Reptarium. And I've been talking to a bunch of arachnid people that might all come here and do a collaboration where we redo our arachnid wall and actually add some cool stuff. I don't know, more on that soon. And there, there's my baby, Elvis. I tell you what, Elvis is definitely a rock star. I mean, yeah, I know he was literally a rock star back in the day. But no, this lizard is a rock star here at the Reptarium. Cool animal. This is our little baby dinosaur. There's no doubt about it. And there's probably not many animals that are more impressive here at the Reptarium when people come to visit because he walks around all the time and kids and everyone can pet him and feed him and do all kinds of stuff. What a cool Asian water monitor. He's about five and a half foot now. He's probably about full grown. Just coming up on 30 pounds. These guys can max out maybe at 40 pounds. So he might get a little bit more heavy bodied as he gets older, but he's only five and a half years old now. These can easily live into their mid to late 30s. A little rapid fire for you here. This is actually a hundred flower rat snake. This is Oz the Mandarin rat snake. And this was one of the first frillies we ever hatched out. Milk frog, Milton the chunky hero mastic. Song, the Argus monitor. Then there's potato, the centralian blue tongue skink, the multi fasciata. Absolutely wonderful animal from the center part of Australia. Take a look at this. How cool is it to have a lizard that just comes when you call it? Come on, do this all the way, bud. Hi, baby boy. Shows you how smart they are. I mean, it immediately knows that I'm here to spend a little time with it. And look at it just like bends right into that pet. It wants to be petted. It's a lot like Tabasco. And that's the thing that's amazing that I never really thought I would know about reptiles is that they enjoy affection. When I pet this guy, look at it, I'll go on this side. They'll do the same thing. See how it just comes out. It's pushing as hard as it can into my finger because it loves to be petted. It, it obviously enjoys the actual attention, the affection. It's amazing. Who could ever think that reptiles are like this? But animals like Toothless, it proves it. We gotta go into the enclosure for this one. This is actually Waffle. Hey, 
Waffles, what's going on, buddy? I tell you, it smells like maple syrup in here so bad. He's a black-throated monitor, the largest of the rock monitors from Africa. Absolutely wonderful. These guys come from Tanzania. Crazy prehistoric as it gets. What's going on, bud? What are you doing? He's just curious, just like Toothless. He's curious. He wants to come and say hi. Monitor lizards, ridiculous. Of course, we have Lucky, the Amazon tree boa. A little bit fired up as always. It's okay, little one. You're unbelievable. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You're all right. Whoa, 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 whoa. Stay away from the face. Don't want to get hit in the face with this, but Amazon tree boa is absolutely wonderful. This is what they would call a tiger face. Okay, buddy, let's go back. Tell her, I love that animal. I've had this animal for like five years since it was a teeny tiny baby. Love it to death. This is a relatively newcomer to the Reptarium. This is a diamond python. It's actually a female diamond python. We also have a male diamond python as well, but they're really placid. When it comes to all of the carpets and diamonds, for whatever reason, the diamonds seem to be a little bit more placid. Even when you catch them in the wild, they aren't nearly as fired up as some of the carpet pythons are. Speaking of affection, look at this girl here. Come on over, girl. She, of course, was the first lizard I ever had that I really saw that loved affection. When you call her, she always comes when she wants to, I should say, but she definitely comes to her name. She comes over. She wants to spend time, which is so cool. I know, girl. I love you too. I know. You're such a good girl. Of course, Rhino Iguana. This is the animal that kind of changed my entire life when it came to reptiles. She's the one that kind of was the foundation of the Reptarium. I think if I didn't get Bella, I'm not sure the Reptarium would actually be around, which is pretty, pretty amazing that I can attribute this relationship right here to wanting to do the Reptarium. I showed you the Diamond Python. Well, this, of course, is a close relative. This was what they would call Darwin's albino carpet python. Very similar looking as far as their structure, but the carpets are a subspecies of diamond python. The albinos haven't been around that long, maybe about a dozen years or so, but wow, what spectacular animals. Not one, not two, but three two-headed turtles. How cool is that? And uh, we have a couple others that are coming up inside. We're going to be the two-headed turtle capital of the world. You guys know this enclosure. This is butterscotch enclosure. This is where she flies out and grabs rabbits out of the air. Frosty, the white monitor, is doing so well. Well, no food, just me. It's getting really big, getting really docile. Comes out not quite as much as Elvis, but it's getting close. It definitely is very curious. Pet its chin just a little bit. Again, needs some more work, but it's getting really, really docile. And I think it's getting more and more beautiful as it's getting some size to it. Love this lizard. This is actually Shakira, the Chuckawalla. Bandit, the false water cobra. Midnight, a little Mexican black king. Luna, the high white, black and white, albino California king snake. This guy's really adorable. It's a striped phase African fat tail gecko. Look at that snake right there. This, of course, is a mad. Madagascan tree boa from the west side of Madagascar, what they call the Mandarin phase. Unbelievable. I always wanted to get these since I was young. I can't believe I actually have a pair of them now. Oh, my girl Gemma. She is definitely getting some size to her. She's a beauty. She's what they call a ghost phase or a rennet ghost phase, reticulated python, and absolutely placid as could be. Oh my gosh, Sunrise is getting big, guys. I had her since she was just a tiny little baby. And look at how big she's starting to get now. She's probably pushing 75 or 80 pounds now. She is getting hard to handle. There's no doubt about that. One day she's still going to get 18 foot and probably 200 pounds. So I should enjoy the time that I can still at least take her out, even if it is a struggle. One snake that is a little bit difficult to take out, and I don't take out nearly as much as it is a handful, of course, is my girl Lucy. Still one of my favorite snakes of all time. Bowser is looking good and getting big. When I got him, he was only 45 pounds. Now he's pushing 100 pounds. Almost doubled his size just in the last four years. Gonna eventually be 200 pounds. I cannot wait. And look at my tortoise is having a feast right now. They're having a good feed. Of course, we got Matilda, we got Franklin, we got Steve, and we got Big Mama. Unbelievable. I love these guys. So that is the tour of the Reptarium. I am out of here. Hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, there's a playlist that you can watch all kinds of videos. You can also hit that subscription button. It would mean a lot to me. Also, hit that like button while you're down there. Have a wonderful day, Reptile Army. Remember, 